time for some uh, ADCs. So ADC stands for Analog to Digital Conversion. And it sounds a bit complicated at first, but it's really not that bad once you do it a few times. And when you've done it a few times like I have, it's, it really does just boil down to setting the correct values in the correct three registers. And that's about it, the most complicated part. Now, uh, what we going to do is I'm you could first you just choose which pin you actually want to take an ADC reading from as you can see I just chose RB1 because it, it was just available so first things first you go to the pin out of the pick that you're using and find the pin and you find its analog input number this is AN10 for RB1 that I'm using now so you're setting that pin, you're clearing whatever was on that pin beforehand, setting the pin as an input, clearing the answer for all the pins, and then just setting the answer, the analog select for that specific pin that you want to read from. So that is the first step. The next few steps are just loading the correct values into the correct adcon registers. Now the ADC is controlled by the adcon register. The adcon register stands for ADC control register, which is pretty straightforward. So what you do is you, you go to the data sheet for adcon zero and see which pins you need to go need to make which values. So see there and then you can see which values correspond to which bits. So you can see uh, the first bit is not implemented red as zero. So you can pretty much put any value there. I usually just put zero there. And then you just find the relevant pin that you want. Now we saw that RB1 is AN10. So we're going to load the value 01010 into that uh, spot in the thing. And that is exactly what we're doing here. The 0101 just to correspond with AN10. After that, you simply go to the go slash done. Now this is basically just telling the pick you want to start an ADC conversion, but we do not want to immediately start an ADC conversion. So we, we're just setting that pin to zero for now and we're enabling the ADC. So we're putting that a bit to one. And that is exactly what I did right over here. Zero to make it not read immediately and one to just enable the ADC for now. Now, ADCON1 is basically just a reference voltage register because for it to convert the, the voltage that you're giving it, it has to use some sort of reference voltage. Nine times out of 10, you're just going to use the pick itself's ref, reference voltage. So as you can see, the this is zero, zero. So it's connected to the internal signal, which is what we want. Zero, zero for the internal ground signal. So and this isn't really relevant in this case. This is not even implemented. So for all intents and purposes, just to simplify everything, just clear if that register completely, just make it all zeros. Then your reference voltage will be sorted out completely. Then after this, using the ADCON2 register. Now the ADCON2 register, if you go look it up in the data sheet, the first part is the left justified or right justified bit. Now this, might not seem significant at first because it's just moving the register left or right. It's just because it, when when you doing an ADC um, conversion, it is basically uh, storing whatever result is into these two registers: the address high register for the most significant bits and the address low register for the least significant eight bits. But when you do uh, the ADC is effectively 10 bits. The pick itself ca is capable of doing a 10 bit conversion. So if you spread five volt, the reference voltage over that range two to the power of 10, then you effectively have a resolution of 4.88 millivolts per count. So for one, there's some, for one binary count on the ADC to go one up or one down, it only needs 4.88. So it can tell the difference between two voltages with, within an accuracy of 4.88 millivolt. That's if you use the 10-bit reading. For at 8-bit reading, it's dividing the reference voltage by 2 to the power of 8 because we're using 8 bits. And then we effectively can detect a difference of up to 19.53 milli uh, down to 19.53 millivolts per count. So if we have two very similar voltages, 
they can be tell, told apart by this amount of difference. So obviously this is less than this because obviously we have more bits to represent this than we do that. But you might think that this is better, more is better, but most of the time you won't be able to measure precise enough to actually make full use of this. For example, if your signal you're measuring has even a tiny bit of noise, like then this 4.883, it's not going to make much of a difference. And you want to, most of the time, you want to ignore the noise. So most of the time, I just use this. It's accurate enough for most things for our purposes. But if you want to use this, then that's fine. So anyway, back to the actual justification. Now, the way justification has any bearing on this is, let's say you want a 10-bit conversion. Then it's going to store the eight least significant bits of the conversion in here and the two most significant bits in the top register. Now that's fine, you can read that and everything, that, that's normal. But let's say you only want to use the top eight bits, the, you want to do an eight bit reading. The way you do an eight bit reading is you just take the eight most significant bits of the 10 bit reading, then you have an eight bit reading in effect. So the way you do that, a much easier way to do that is to left justify everything. So just move everything. So the top eight bits are on this register and the lower two bits are on this register. So you can just effectively only take these, use these as your final ADC result and ignore these. Then you have an eight bit conversion, which is why I'm doing a left justified conversion right here. So it's left justifying it. Uh, this is not implemented, so I just make it zero. This is the acquisition time. So if you want a more precise conversion and the signal you're measuring doesn't change too much and it's not and timing is not of the essence, I'd recommend making this a bit longer just to make it a bit more precise, making the sampling time a bit longer. But um, yeah, the, this is this is the way you actually change how long the ADC specifically waits to sample the actual signal that you want. And this is just a uh, how fast the ADC clock goes, you can make it, 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 it's directly derived from the internal oscillator. So it can be the internal oscillator divided by 64. So that means every for every 64 clocks, the internal oscillator does, it clocks this successive approximation register that the ADC re uses only once. So if this value is higher, then the clock is slower. So I usually just use uh, these few values. I haven't had a situation where I had to use a uh, faster or anything. And this is a dedicated internal oscillator just for the ADC if you specifically want to do it that way. And yeah, and then and these so these two settings aren't as important, but once you get to larger loads, this becomes a little bit important because obviously the capacitor that's sampling this is getting going to load slower and slower if you have a larger load attached to it. But anyway, you just set that, those to the values that you prefer for the timing requirements. And you set this for the justification that you need for the correct ADC. And then you are, you have just successfully set up an ADC. Now to actually read the ADC, you just set a specific bit. The other bit from that, in it, that bit is called go, very aptly named go. So for adcon zero, whenever you want to do an ADC reading, you set you manually set this bit, the go bit, to one, and when it's one, the AD start C starts and it converts, 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 and the moment the conversion is complete, it sets this bit to zero by itself, and it moves the result into address high and address low. But we left justified result, so everything we need is going to be an address high. So what you do is you set the adcon zero go bit to make the ADC start. And you call a little subroutine called poll ADC. It poll ADC effectively does what the name implies. It polls the ADC. So it checks whether the go bit has it been cleared by the pick yet, meaning that the ADC conversion has been done. No, it has not been cleared. So we go back again and check if it's clear. And we continually loop through this process. And once it is cleared, it's going to skip this little instruction and return. So this is just a way to ensure that the ADC reading is complete, that we have the full ADC reading before we actually do anything with it. 
And this is a little, just a little extra to just move it to a port, the ADC reading, so you can physically see. Now to actually do a practical, to see the ADC working, I just connected the pick over here to the PC and I have it connected to the program and everything. So we can just program it and then you can see what happens when its specific values are in the ADC register. So we can just make a watch for port A. Okay, so now it's just running through the setup and it's setting everything correctly. And now it's just going to, okay, so now it just read a value from the ADC. It's about, if we look at this, it is it read at about 10011. So if we go to the little calculator, we have 10011. And it basically read one zero zero one one, and it's basically read the there. It's read one fifty two. Now for one fifty two, one fifty two times zero point zero. Uh, 19.5 uh it's 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 about 2.88 volts if you really it's a very rough estimation if you're timing it with a which is basically what i got here i i got i, I just hooked up about 2.9 volts on the potentiometer that it just read and yeah then it just reads it over and over again and moves it to port a continuously so you can see it moves it and then port A is whatever value you want. So it's 152. And then, yes, and that is how you do an ADC reading.